More than a century ago, Albert Einstein discovered and developed his famous theory of relativity. The idea that space and time are connected means that time travel could be possible one day. Of course, once physicists find out how it works. But while we're all stuck in 2024, there's no better way to transport yourself to a different time and place than by learning about the fascinating archaeological sites and discoveries made across the globe. So stay with us as we show you some of the most interesting discoveries made in March that have shed a better light on our understanding of human history. A lot of human history is buried underwater, where many places often give us clues about how people lived in the past. For example, the Phoenicians, the Greeks, the Romans, and the Carthaginians were all seafaring people who lived in Europe. Archaeological records of seafaring ships and the presence of ancient coastal sediments show that during the Neolithic period, agricultural communities began to spread across Europe and North Africa. These were communities that fished, hunted, and traded by sea. The Neolithic period started in the Near East around 10,000 BCE, but groups of people from that area slowly spread to the whole Mediterranean around 7,500 to 7,000 BCE and eventually made it to the beaches of Portugal around 5,400 BCE. In a new study, Dr. Juan Gibaya of the Spanish National Research Council and his co-workers looked at five 7,000-year-old advanced canoes from the Neolithic town of La Marmota, which is near Rome, Italy. These canoes were made from trees that had been cut down between 5,700 and 5,100 BCE. The study shows that the boats are made from four different kinds of wood, which is rare for similar sites. They are also built using advanced methods, such as cross-wire supports. One boat is linked to three T-shaped wooden objects. Each of these had a number of holes that were probably used to attach lines to sails or other seafaring items. These traits, along with earlier rebuilding efforts, show that these were ships that could withstand the sea. And this conclusion is backed by the fact that stone tools from nearby islands were found at the site. These canoes are exceptional examples of prehistoric boats whose construction required a detailed understanding of structural design and wood properties, in addition to well-organized specialized labor, the researchers said. Similarities between these canoes and more recent nautical technologies support the idea that many major advantages in sailing were made during the early Neolithic. Direct dating of Neolithic canoes from La Marmota reveals them to be the oldest in the Mediterranean, offering invaluable insights into Neolithic navigation, they added. Our study reveals the amazing technological sophistication of early agricultural and pastoral communities, highlighting their woodwork skills and the construction of complex vessels. Next up, archaeologists discovered that Neanderthals used a multi-component glue to attach stone tools together. This finding is the oldest evidence of such a sophisticated glue being used in Europe. It suggests that the ancestors of modern humans, the Neanderthals, were more intelligent and culturally advanced than previously believed. These astonishingly well-preserved tools showcase a technological solution broadly similar to examples of tools made by early modern humans in Africa. But the exact recipe reflects a Neanderthal spin, which is the production of grips for handheld tools, says Radu Lovita, an associate professor at New York's University Center for the Study of Human Origins. Furthermore, in a collection of Berlin's Museum of Prehistory and Early History are stone tools from Le Mustier that were used by Neanderthals during the Middle Paleolithic period of the Musterian, which lasted from 120,000 to 40,000 years ago. These tools had not been looked at in detail before. The items have been individually wrapped and untouched since the 1960s, says Dudkovich. As a result, the adhering remains of organic substances were very well preserved. The components used to make this adhesive was a mix of ochre and asphalt, and it was found on a number of stone tools, including scrapers, flakes, and blades. As a comparison, Homo sapiens who lived in Africa in the early modern era knew how to use glue with multiple ingredients, such as tree oils and ochre, but earlier Neanderthals in Europe did not. So the creation of glue and their use in making tools is seen as some of the best physical proof of how early humans' cultures changed and how smart they were. 
If you like us and love traveling back in time to the primitive eras, give us a follow for weekly content. Between 60,000 and 70,000 years ago, Homo sapiens left Africa and started to live in new places all over the world. Despite how important this period was, it's amazing how little we know about where our ancestors lived. What happened after Homo humans left Africa? A new study says that our genes hold the answers. A recent study that looked at DNA from both ancient and modern times found that the Persian Plateau was an important hub for early Homo humans who left their home in Africa and lived in other places. Combining genetic, paleoecological, and archaeological evidence, experts have found that the area around present-day Iran likely served as a home away from home for about 20,000 years, allowing a large group of Homo sapiens to live and thrive before they spread out across Eurasia and beyond. The researchers, led by professors Lutza Pagani and Michael Petragalia, used a new method that combines genetic data with paleoecological models that show that the Persian Plateau in Southwest Asia became a pivotal place for humans to live and grow much larger than other places in Western Asia. This means that after leaving Africa, the ancestors of all current people who are not African lived on the Persian Plateau for about 20,000 years. In other words, if you have relatives from Europe, Asia, the Americas, or Oceania, it's likely that some of them spent a lot of time in this area. Finally, archaeologists have figured out that the stone tools they found at the Korolevo archaeological site on the Tisla River in western Ukraine are 1.42 million years old. These stone tools are made in the older one style, which is the oldest way of making tools. The historian Vladislav Gladilin originally discovered the Korolevo site in 1974. According to Dr. Vitali Usik, an archaeologist from the Institute of Archaeology at the Czech Academy of Sciences, the site has layers of loess and palisol up to 14 meters deep, containing thousands of stone tools. They found evidence of hominins living there in seven different time periods, spanning from around 1.4 million years ago to about 30,000 years ago. Yet they recorded artifacts from at least nine different ancient cultures at the site. Now these stone objects, which are linked to Homo erectus, show that hominins were already in Europe a long time ago. The oldest signs of humans in Europe are found in two places, Atapurca, Spain, and Valenet Cave, France. In Spain, the oldest human fossils discovered at Cima del Elefante are established to be around 1.2 to 1.1 million years old. Similarly, in southern France, stone tools found in Valenet Cave are thought to be from the same time period, around 1.2 to 1.1 million years ago. The stone tools discovered also support the idea that people came from Europe from the east. For example, Dr. Roman Garba, an archaeologist from the Institute of Archaeology and the Nuclear Physics Institute at the Czech Academy of Sciences, mentioned that Damanisi, Georgia, is one of those important places in the east of Europe. There they found layers with skulls of early human relatives and stone tools, which are believed to be around 1.85 to 1.78 million years old. However, because of the big difference in both space and time between the Caucasus and southwestern Europe, we still don't fully understand important parts of how the first humans spread into Europe. From the first boats to the earliest evidence of glue, if you enjoy traveling back to our primitive roots and keeping yourself informed on the latest archaeological and paleontological discoveries, make sure to check out our channel.